Hello and welcome to another Franchise Hockey Manager 2 stream. My name is Adam. I am the Community Manager of Franchise Hockey. With me as always is FHM producer Jeff. Say hi Jeff. Hey everybody. And we are back to the Winnipeg Jets of 2017-2018. It's been a couple weeks since we've been here and we are excited to get the season started, especially after a disappointing end to last season. Uh, if you remember... Yep, uh, first place over on the league and out in the first round. Yes. So we've made some changes. We traded up in the draft. We signed some big free agents. And really big free agent, Victor Hedman? Yes. So we added Victor Hedman, who immediately strengthens our blue line, which is great. He's only 26. And we got to draft Nolan Patrick, who is expected to be a star in the game. But we have to decide now whether or not we want to keep him on the roster for this coming season. Yes. We can see right now we only have uh, 20 or 21 players, 19 dressed. So we do have room, but the question is becomes where does Nolan Patrick fit on our team? He's currently a three and a half star ability with a five star potential. And right ahead of him right now we have Blake Wheeler, Jordan Eberly, and Kyle Connor. Who are going to be starting so what's your thoughts and that three and a half stars is probably at the low end of three and a half stars because i'm looking at an earlier version of this save from about a month earlier and he's just uh gone up and gotten that extra half star he was three stars uh in august so yeah. relative to the other three and a half star guys uh he's probably a little bit there and then we when we look at how he's going to fit into the lineup i mean he really had a very good playoff uh, after we picked him up from edmonton uh, we lost Wheeler uh, right at the beginning of the playoffs, and that was probably a big reason uh, why we wound up losing. Yeah. So those guys are probably penciled in as our, you know, top two lines. Uh, we've got Kyle Connor, who's only 20 a year last year, and we need to figure out how to, you know, get him enough playing time. So where does Patrick go? Okay. Well, just looking here, Kyle Connor had 37 points. Nope. Sorry, around 31 points in his rookie campaign. And 31. 16, 21. So not bad for ice time. But we can see if we can get him a little more. Yeah, probably want him to shoot a little more this year. But uh, yeah. you know, five goals and twenty-six assists. But but I mean, he's he's coming along reasonably well. He's still got five five star potential. So yeah, I'm not sure we really, we really want to cut his ice time to make room for Patrick. No, we also have uh, Julian Gauthier, who is our second round pick a couple of years ago, and he's six foot five, two forty nine. So he's a massive body. Who can come stand in front of our net? Who might be a good right winger too for us? Yep, and he's a year older than uh, Patrick is, uh, so we're probably if he doesn't uh, make our roster, we're going to send him back down to Manitoba. Uh, if Patrick, we don't we decide not to keep him, we're going to have to send him back to Brandon to the WHL because of the uh, major junior NHL agreement that uh, forces us to do that. We can't send him to the AHL, so if we yeah. do the if we do do that, uh, he's gone for the year. We're not going to be able to bring him back up uh, until, you know, conceivably the playoffs. Okay. Well, if let's... Brandon's out of it early, which if if they've got Patrick back, they probably won't be. They're going to be a Memorial Cup uh, contender if they get him next year. Yeah. We also, or this I year. believe we signed Stelios Mathos, who was our round two pick in this past year's draft. But we sent him back down to the WHL already because he was only a three-star. So he, he'll... Yeah, d should be something good for the future as well. Uh, yep. if, if we take a look at the Moose roster, about who we could possibly call up, we're going to need to bring a defenseman up. Anyway, so we have an extra defenseman with us. And uh, who? And we've actually got, I'm not seeing a lot of terrific candidates. Nobody's three and a half stars yet. Uh, well, we got do we want to maybe take a quick look at the free agent pool? Sure. The only guy who I would consider right Pardon now you. would be Tucker Poolman. We signed him. Actually, ironically, uh, he played with North Dakota the past two years. And then when I went to see where he, what he was going to do this year, he had signed in the German Tier 2 League. And I said, no, I think I'd rather have you playing with the Moose. <laughs> yeah. Although three-star potential he's already added, I'm not sure how much of an upside uh, he's got. Well, he would be a fine depth defenseman, I think. Uh, so if we look at our free agents... Uh, for Manitoba, maybe. <laughs> well, 
yeah. If we look at our free agents here, we'll filter and take out. Default. Probably a good time to show people a filter too. We can, yeah, take yeah. it. All right, so filters just above here. Down we'll to just a defenseman. It. And we'll just keep left and right defensemen, take off goalie, wings, and center. We can look at all abilities. Hit OK and take a look here. Yeah, you might as well just take that off to at least three star uh, current ability. Because you're not going to really want anybody uh, well, worse you know than what? that. There's lots of guys here on, on the top, so we're fine just with our current sword. Yeah. We can see David Rundblad. Well, we've got a pretty good selection of three and a half stars here. Yeah. We could sign Mark Strait to be our seventh guy. 39, 39 years old. I think they had a pretty good year last year in Philly, though. Look at that, 47 points. Yeah. Just take a look at his, sc er, his scouting. Uh, he seems to be very prone to injuries. Uh, that makes it tough. Yeah, uh, Jared Cowan is interesting. That wouldn't be some bad depth. Or is it, or I'm, I'm looking at older save. Is he still there in yours? Yep. Yeah, he is still there. And just taking a look. In 26, you might be able to squeeze an extra half star out of him if he develops a little bit more. What, though? I didn't really look at the roster. Uh, do we need uh, anybody on one particular side? Uh, I think we're kind of just balancing between the two. We have Hedman, Morris, yeah, so we Gross, gonna give... Myers, Bufflin, Truba. So we're kind of balanced on both sides. Mm -hmm. Then again, that's if we're gonna we want to give Nurse a lot of playing time this year, don't we? To yeah. See if he develops. To see if he can get to that. So sort of maybe we should. We're better off just bringing up uh, one of the older guys from the farm team as the seventh defenseman, one of the three stars, well, Brendan right. Kiten or somebody like that. Well, that's why I wondered if maybe Tucker Poolman would be a great guy just to sit on the bench, so he's not stealing ice time from the younger guys. Yep, uh, him, uh, Aaron Harstead's another one, had a full year in the NHL last year, didn't do too badly. See, Pullman's coming right out of college. He's yeah. one of those guys that stays in college till he's 24 or so. But he is actually uh, going back yeah. for the same season. So, yeah, I'm thinking What Harstead. about uh, Jan Kostelek, uh, the Czech kid? Uh, well, three stars, four-star potential, and two it, good seasons in Manitoba. Well, my... I don't want to really bring him up if he's going to be our seventh defenseman and not playing. That's my yeah, fair thought. enough. Because uh, I'd rather have him and like Semi Niku developing down below. Yes, yeah, so I'd say either Harth, uh, Harth, Why don't we bring Pullman up for the exhibition season, and try him in a few games there. If he's really awful, we can right. so we'll try Harstad or Kiten or one of the other guys. We'll bring him up then, and we'll go back. We should also bring up another four, or up two forwards as well. We're gonna should we send Nolan Patrick down? I feel like we should send Nolan Patrick down. Yeah, I just I don't see a place for him on the team yet. Uh, he's he's gonna be uh, his development might well three and a half stars. I think he's close enough. He's not completely gonna be. Uh, that much better than everybody else in the WHL, so I don't think that's going to screw his development up too much. So, too much, and he's definitely going to be worse playing on the fourth line here. So, yeah, yeah I'd say put us in Brandon, uh, we'll send, uh, and Brandon should. Well, we'll have to keep in mind to check on them about halfway through the year and just see how many points he's getting because for sure it should be pretty ridiculous. Uh, All right, so I is that is a loaded uh, team. I'm just gonna do this. That's interesting weird um checking out the moose roster i was just seeing what's going on and i was looking for someone who would be a good depth guy to bring up or maybe we should go to free agency to pick up somebody well let's see what we got in manitoba first uh there's a few three and a half star guys there well, i wondered if a guy like landon ferraro might be a good guy just to have up as a depth guy Some yeah, that's, that's one possibility. Uh, Brent, what about Brendan Lemieux? He's three and a half stars, and that's his potential right now. Uh, yeah. And so he's probably not going to get do a whole lot more improving in Manitoba. Well, I just hope he keep playing, though, and keep. And there's a chance he can move up versus just sitting on the bench. Because yeah. I don't imagine he I'd have him maybe as the first uh, call up if somebody gets hurt. I think so, yeah. We also have... Uh, or is he on the 
top team right now. I gotta go back and look. Where where is uh, Angry Man? Not seeing him here. You called him up. Did I? Okay. Go with Yeah. Yeah. You brought him up. And for those of you who do not know who we're talking about, we're talking about Nick Patan, who's on the f right there. Okay. So oh, Nick Patan. I thought you talked about Gauthier. Yeah, yeah. Patan, but Patan's on the yeah. uh, main roster too. Okay. So we got a little younger this year and uh, spent a lot more money. Uh, well, we added a big contract. So. Yep. Uh, so who are you thinking for an extra guy? I'm thinking either Ferraro or maybe JC Lapon. Wouldn't be a terrible. Uh, I think. Again, we can try. We can shuffle guys around during the preseason if we try a few guys out and they're not doing too well. Should we take a quick look at, at uh, free agents in case there's somebody who we should maybe take a look at? Two again or no? Uh, yeah, it's that. still uh, September, guys. Yeah, not that's into September. I mean, the guys will be maybe a little more uh, interested in taking and signing for a little uh, less than they would have before. Pavel Datsuk, uh, yeah. at in my uh, older save, is still hanging around. No, he uh, actually just signed with Tampa Bay, of all places, in this one. So. Yeah, there we go. Now one last season there for him. Yeah. Well, he but signed I don't a two-year really two contract, lot, uh... actually. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, Thomas Vanek is still available. Well, it's Florida. He's retiring. <laughs> Thomas Vanek. Uh, what else we got here? Robin Klinkhammer. Mm -hmm. Rob Klinkhammer. <laughs> Jim Slater. Yeah, I think we. I had him. Clint Cameron we had in the uh, that uh, Las Vegas exhibition game we did. Uh, he hasn't done much there, so. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh... Oh, poor Jim Slater, man, he went down, real quick. <laughs> he went from the NHL to the SPHL. I'm tempted to bring him back. <laughs> He'd be a good depth guy. Wow, yeah, that's. Uh... Did he not? I'm just looking at his career history here to see what happened to him. Uh, looks like uh, when we let him go, he signed in Switzerland, and then they cut him before the season started. <laughs> Ouch. So that stings, yeah. Well, I wonder how much he wants. Let's take a look here. Jim Slater. Yeah, you can always just send him, pick him up as depth for the moose. Offer a contract. He wants 550000 I think I could easily do that. Yep, that's a minimum. You can... Is it, uh, will he take a two-way, though? Let's find out. Uh, he's going to need more than. Let's offer him big money to be down with the Miz. Let's offer him 90000 to be with the Miz. Uh, ask for response. He is happy with a two way offer, so. We'll see how he does there. Yeah, it's always good to have a veteran down there. Somebody will probably wind up being the captain. The only other guy I can see. I don't think they've named one yet. Uh, Cormier's the assistant. Alternate. And... Anybody else we should look at? I'm just going to load this back up here. No, I kind of like the way we're looking right now. Youngish team. Uh, good scoring, good depth, and uh, a couple of guys on their way up. All right. Let me just advance to the next day, see if we can sign Jim Slater. And find out. Jim Slater contract update. And we should probably add a couple of exhibition games to this uh, exhibition teams to this game uh, when we get to the uh, beginning of next year. Add a team. We had known uh, a little earlier we would have been able to do it for this season to get Vegas in there. Yeah. Well, we'll see how that goes. Since uh, it's apparently official now. Yes, although they haven't named the team yet, which just seems a little odd. He seemed to shy away from calling them yeah, the Black Knights, though, which was interesting. Well, I hope so. That's just, that just makes no sense for Las Vegas. I mean, the guy... He's gonna, is he going to steal a logo from West Point, too? Or... <laughs> he might. Yeah. Liam Finley. Just signed. Okay. Oh, yes, I forgot. Lightning nabbed Havel Datsuk for two years. Two years, 11.46 million. That's total, not for, for season, right? Uh, 
I have no idea. It sounds like it's probably total. I, I really hope it's total. <laughs> well, that would be, yeah, 573. Eisenman so won't even give, yeah. Real life Eisenman isn't gonna, even going to give Stampos, what is it, 9 million? I think you said his ceiling was 8 something. Well, yes, well, if I remember right, the Lightning actually, what, Jonathan Duran's with Pittsburgh. So I'm not sure. Yeah, they re-signed Stan Cross in the game. Still, they got he got seven point. It's a seven point seven cap hit. I think his actual salary is in the eights. Actually, Ben Bishop's still on free agency. He has not been yeah. moved. That's quite an interesting roster they have. And the uh, face gen version of Stamkos in this game has a really awesome mustache. Wait, I gotta. Oh wait, I gotta go back to that now. Uh, we want to see. He's got like a Lemmy tribute thing going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, definitely got to see that now. Uh, roster. And we can see Steven Stamkos. That is a very epic. Very nicely done. <laughs> I think thing. it needs to go with that in real life. Yes, I would very much support that. All right, so we got a trade offer here. And Jim Slater signed. What? Who's this guy? This guy's pretty good. Should, there's uh, Ryan McMahon. Yeah, a couple of screens behind him. Yeah, he uh, was just put on waivers by the Oilers, which is odd because he's only 18 and should be going back to junior. But he's one and a half stars with a potential of four. I'm tempted to say we should pick him up and then send him down. It's a, a trade offer, or is he on waivers? Okay. He's on waivers. Uh, yeah, he's on waivers. Okay, that's odd. They shouldn't be doing that. Uh, let's claim player. Trade. For, okay, Jim Slater. Could not pass up the offer. Oh no, he's two and a half stars. Oh, Jim. I knew he was rated B, but I was not expecting that big of a drop. That makes me sad. Well, he's, uh... Oh, yeah, because he would have been in a league that we weren't paying any attention to this year, so the scouting would have been pretty old. Well, it was updated not that long ago, I thought. All right, Buffalo would trade Ben Calhoun for Tucker Poolman. Ben Calhoun, taking a look at him, is a three-and-a-half star potential, 2.0A ability, playing... With the Rochester Americans, apparently, for some reason. Oh, he's with the U.S. Okay, interesting. He looked like he was going to go to college, and they uh, wound up signing him instead. Yeah. Thought There's so. a, Normally, guys will refuse to... Most yeah. uh, players that are college-bound will refuse to sign with the NHL team until uh, they've got a couple of years in college, but uh, once there's a small chance that uh, they can decide to go for the pro contact contract instead, and it looks like that's what he's done here. Thoughts on him? Think about that trade. Uh, well, the only thing that's going to screw up our plans to have Poolman as the number seven uh, defenseman. But, I mean, it's a probably it's a slightly better prospect. We'd have to go back to Manitoba and. Uh... Well, you tell me what you think. Yes or no? Um, I'd let it go for now. All right. We'll just reject trade. Just stick with what we, with what we're planning, and uh, yeah, we may. Should we send Jim Slater down to the line or something? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's, that wasn't even a, an NHL pickup for us. That was just for depth in Manitoba. Well, should we add somebody else or bring somebody else up from New Sun? I'm just gonna look at tall. What have we got? Uh, and is there anybody? We have one guy who's currently under contract with us. Quite a few mute moves. Yeah, you may have gone. Sorry, you were saying? Yeah, nothing. Uh, lost my train of thought there. Uh, have we got 22 guys or 23 on the uh, main roster right now? Uh, we only have 21 at the moment. Because our only backup is Tucker Pullman. Everybody else is. Okay, in. so we're going to have to move up one of the. Uh, who's the other. Did you, you didn't bring up Ferraro yet? No, I hadn't brought Ferraro up. Should I bring him up? 
You yeah, I'd to. say so. I think you'll have to clear waivers anyway, so bringing him up wouldn't be a terrible idea. All right. Yeah, he's 26. Yeah. Um, dress. I'm just dressing some players on the moose because they were not, uh, did not have a full roster. And we'll find out. You can probably move that guy that's in Tulsa up back up to the moose. Okay, let me just do that too. Oops, not to Winnipeg. Go back to the moose here for a second. Uh, they have 18 players dressed. Get Sammy Yuki in there. Yeah, they'll fill in their own, own roster too with uh, free agents if we don't give them a uh, full one, so that you don't really have to worry about uh, getting that. Just get our players on the roster there. I just want to, I'm curious to see what their lines look like. All right, so Jim Slater comes in on the fourth line right wing, so that's perfect for him. Brendan Lemieux is playing fourth line, though. That's interesting. Uh, hopefully they figure that out and change that. Yeah, well, I'm waiting until they've actually played a game, and that'll probably get shuffled around. Uh, Betz07 in the chat said, Decide to do what if there was a no lockout season, and it looks like Crosby will be a Ranger. <laughs> Interesting. Mm. And, okay, I'm going to advance to another day to see if we get that waiver claim, too. Yep. From Edmonton. Really odd they put him on waivers like that. They shouldn't be doing that. I'll have to check on that. Well, let's find out. Oh, we got him on waivers. So let's send him down to Mississauga. And he can keep developing down there. Uh, scouting reports. Nothing major we need to be looking at right now, I don't think. But again, if anyone is for a first-time viewer, Jeff, do you want to explain how a scouting report works? Uh, the actual scouting screen or the scouting, uh, like the level? Well, just just the scouting. Or the, oh, oh, the scouting. Oh, sorry. I was a couple of screens behind you. Yeah, the scouting report uh, just gives you a summary of everything that your scout has been doing. Um, I think we, we should probably check our scouts, actually, and make sure they're still uh, all actively assigned. Uh, lets you know which players he's looked at in the last little while and gives you, uh, you know, the, what their current... Uh, how current skill level is out of five stars and potential out of five stars and also indicates the uh, scouting level they have with A being the maximum amount of scouting you can do on someone right down to E, which is a guy you haven't seen at all. So the higher the letter is, the uh, more reliable the report in theory should be. It still depends to some extent on the, uh, sc uh, the scouting level of your, uh, or the scouting ability of your scouts. Yeah. All right, so let's take a quick look at our scouts here. So if we go to... Uh, the scouting one here. Well, if we click on personnel, first of all, we can see how many people we have hired and how many scouts we have. And you can see we have quite a number of scouts, which is not a bad thing because it helps us yep. get as much as we can. And uh, and I think we've actually looked at the scouting screen. We've got a pretty good uh, setup here. Well, let's take a quick look here. We can see we cover just about everywhere. <laughs> Lots in the WHL, US, Canada, Midwest, Europe. Yeah. We don't have a, we only have one guy in Europe. Yeah, Europe. we got Europe coverage, Central Europe. Europe at large. No, we got a few of them. There's a couple in Northern Europe, uh, right. one guy in the former Badanovich in the USSR, which. Yeah, everything looks pretty good. Uh, wait, where did the, oh, actually, it looks like he's, did we, did you change him? I have. Oh, we got, we got scouting turned on to AI? Yes, I believe. Uh, let me check. So I go manager options, manager, scouting is set to assistant. Yes. Okay, yeah. So it's going to shuffle those guys around. So sometimes the uh, Russian guy is going to be looking at uh, Northern Europe and other times he'll go back to Russia. So well, that's nothing to worry about there. And with that number of staff, uh, we should have a pretty good coverage here. I'm not seeing anything obvious that he's missing now between. Because I've got an older version of that scouting screen here and I can see the ones that have changed in there. Uh, 
rotating around pretty good. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's how we actually good. fixed that was something got addressed uh, when in one of the last patches. Uh, the uh, AI scouting selection hadn't been that good, but we uh, made a few changes to it, and it's uh, improved quite a bit. Ratcast in the chat asks, will FHM3 have any tips? Would love to see some AI feedback on what my team needs. Uh, uh, yeah, that's I'm trying to think of. We haven't divulged a lot of what's coming in FHM3 yet. Yeah, I'm just trying to I'm trying to put together the things that I know of are in FHM3, and uh, I don't think there's going to be directly any suggestions like that, but it should be a little easier to see from looking at the uh, screen exactly what... I mean, there's, there's one thing in particular that I'm thinking of that I can't talk about right now yeah. that, uh, would, uh, that will really uh, give you a much better idea of the kind of players you need to get. Let's just say this. There will be more information coming in the coming weeks about some of that stuff. Yeah. But yes, it is something we are aware of. People are, are wanting. Bets07 in the chat says, For coaches and assistant coaches, is there any information you can share about how cumulative ratings are determined? I.e. mental, 4 out of 5. Yeah. Offensive, 3 out of 5. Defensive, 3 out of 5, etc. I pulled up my personnel screen where you see these big in big numbers. Here. Yeah, can you switch it, the uh, info thing to uh, training? Uh, training. Info yes. drop down on the right. Yep. Yeah, and you can see there that uh, all the different categories uh, guys are, or several of the categories that they're rated in: uh, physical coaching, etc., defensive skills, and so on. Uh, the game will take. I th I'm trying to remember offense if it's a top two or three scores from the assistant coaches. And it'll also uh, give give a little more consideration to the score of the head coach, and it combines those, and that's how it calculates the score out of five for your coaching staff. Uh, there's a various other, you know, there's small uh, technicalities if you don't have enough. If you if if you've got fewer than say if you say you only got one or two uh, assistant coaches, it adds and changes the weighting a little bit. But that's when you've got a big group, big uh, group of coaches like ours. It'll take the top two or three, and uh, then uh, put some extra and plus the head coach, and uh, give a little extra weight to the head coach. And that's how it's going to count. They're going to com combine those ratings and uh, figures out a number to tell you yeah. the, the star rating out of five, which then is applied to the uh, training screen when we go over there. Well, we have. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six coaches, including our head coach. But realistically, that's not actually out of line with what's in the NHL. Thinking just about the Winnipeg, yeah, that's pretty normal. Winnipeg Jets, what we have right now. There's Paul Maurice, Charlie Huddy coaches the de defense. Pascal Vincent was coaching offense slash special teams, but he's now been named the head coach of the Manitoba Moose, so they're currently looking at somebody else. We have uh, Wade Flaherty as a goaltending coach. Uh, I can't think of the name of the person who's a video. And speaking of that, we just got a question from Betso7 in the chat. Is it ideal to have a goalie coach who is excellent even though he's poor and everything else? Uh, yes, that's fine. That's the goalie coach. Uh, in fact, that's the way the ratings will probably tend to work. Goalie coaches will have a good goalie rating and not be that good at um, – well, typically not, but typically won't be that good at any of the other areas. I mean, you might occasionally get a guy like Glenn Hanlon, who's coached at the NHL level and is also a you know former goalie, so he knows so he's got a good goalie rating. Yeah. But for the most part, the goalie goalie coaches aren't going to have uh, good ratings for the other position. But the goalie coach is actually an exception to what I just said about how the ratings are calculated, because in this case, the goalie coaching uh, number is calculated. Most of that is calculated from the uh, coach with the highest goalie coaching rating which is assumed to be your uh, goaltending coach yeah player d in our case yeah no i just hit advanced so we can get to the start of the preseason but regardless i mean you have a video coach you have we have uh, jimmy roy hired too as an assistant coach but i mean he's co the coach of development so he's bouncing between everyone who's a jets prospect to coach them well, yeah, a lot of teams are doing that now. That's something I think we might uh, look at modeling down the road where it's, you know, most teams are taking one or two former players and uh, having them be in that sort of, sort of uh, roving role. They'll talk, they'll go see, they'll work with the AHL guys. 
maybe some guys on the the younger guys on the main roster or even go down to the minors and or rather junior rather and uh, see some of the prospects there i was just paying attention here and we can see Ilya kovalchuk has made his way back to the nhl with colorado for two years at seven and a half million <laughs> ben bishop signed with carolina for 4.43 million for three years yeah. everyone's moving around i saw a rumor the other day uh, where kovalchuk was supposedly going to that new uh, chinese team in the khl with uh, mike keenan as the coach that's a great combination yeah well we'll see how that actually works out uh scouting the saga Hag. Nicholas Haig. Uh, what's his history? Drafted by Ottawa. Okay, interesting. Uh, Boston, Arizona. Dennis Seidenberg has been traded to Arizona for Joe Morrow. Interesting trade. Keep pushing forward here to the preseason. And see what happens. man so here's a question for you Jeff because I personally haven't done this so I know you said we should add uh, a Las Vegas team which we will do on another yep uh, how does it um, let me rephrase that uh, do I get to protect players or how does that work on my end Yep, you'll have to protect players. You'll get a warning that the draft's about to occur, and you'll have to submit a list of uh, which players you uh, want to, uh, you don't want to expose to the draft. In which, and we may have a, we could be headed for a problem because we've got uh, two young goalies, yeah, and, and be able to. Protect. So that's that would be one worry for us. And we've actually got a lot of young guys who are just going to probably be because of the amount they're playing for us will be eligible for the draft, so I think we can safely assume we're going to lose a couple of guys in the expansion draft when it comes. Okay. So I just kind of looking over here rather quickly. I flipped us up to our lines. We're now at the start of the preseason where we're going to be playing at Detroit. And uh, I quickly moved Julian Goche because there was an open spot in the lineup after we set Nolan Patrick down, and he slotted in as a third-ring right winger. With Adam Lowry on the left ring, Brian Little, and him. That means Jordan Eberle's on the fourth line. How do you feel about that? Which is where he was previously, I guess. Uh, not that. I think I'd rather have uh, Gauthier on that fourth line spot. Although, although Eberle's, uh, it's, it's it is just an exhibition game, and Eberle's on the power play units as well. Yeah. So let me just take a quick look here. And fill in the extra spots we see here. And we seem to be good. So let's take a look at this Detroit game. Hutchison's in net. And we're going to sim in this and see how we did. We lost 4 3 to Detroit, but we outshot them 35 to 21. Take a look at the box. Okay, board. let's take a look through the stats for the game and see how the guys that we were wanting to take a look at did. Uh, Victor Hedman came to play with a 90.5 game rating to start off. 20 minutes, 24 seconds played. Josh Morrissey, ooh, that's not a great game for him. Okay, and what happened here? Yeah. Tyler Myers only had 15 minutes on him. That's not great either. Uh, Nick yeah, not Eberle and Gauthier both uh, kind of rough. And who's the other guy we were going to look at? We should try to work a couple of the call-ups into the lineup next time. Gauthier's got two shots on net, one missed shot. All right, nothing too surprising here. Wow, Mark Shifley got destroyed on the face-off circle. Nine for nine. Did have three assists, though, so. Yeah, Austin Matthews. All right, nothing too noticeable. Oh, did Travis Hamanek is with Detroit? How did that happen? It looks like they picked up Brad Marchand, Marchand too. Picked him They've up. They've got a bunch of turnover there. 
for Jacob Kendall in the sixth rounder. All right, interesting. And a trade deadline deal right at the end? Could be. Yeah, well, not quite at the deadline, but January 8th. Uh, uh, let's go for today. Had a pretty good half season for him. Yeah. I'm just wondering if maybe we should uh, tweak our tactics a little bit. Salary cap reminder. Uh, May want to wait for that until the start of the regular season so we know who we've actually got uh, in the lineup in case we want to move somebody or... All right. See how the new guys do, but I would uh, dress a couple of the guys we've called up, uh, Ferraro and uh, well, we're gonna what's his name, the uh, defenseman? Hellebuck in. Tucker Poolman. Okay. Tucker Poolman. Let's take Darnell. No, let's leave Darnell in there soon. Let's take Victor Hedman out. We don't need him getting hurt. And we'll just Tucker Poolman. And we'll take... Who's a good person to take out? Let's take out... Uh, let's take out the Captain Andrew lad. And we'll throw Landon for our own. Ferraro was put on the trade block just in case we got something, a good offer for yep, him. Yep, somebody might uh, take that. And so we'll see. Need to resign uh, Hutchinson at some point this year, too? Yeah. Oh, we won 6 3 in our second game. Austin Matthews, one goal, three assists. Taking a look down here. And Josh Morrissey. Much better game from him. Dustin Bufflin. Didn't That's go. good to see. I mean, he was he was our big guy on defense last year, and then he kind of didn't do too much in that uh, first playoff round where we wound up losing. Uh, lots of good minutes. Still like to see if we can amp up our fourth line minutes, which I think is what we're going to have to look at. So let's see. How did the... Uh... Ferraro did uh, well, seven minutes, not seven too bad. Minutes. Pullman, not a bad little game out of him. No. Let's see Scored goal. a goal. Nine minutes. Hmm. Let's, well, let's look at time on, on, see if we can get our forward lines just a little bit tweaked. Or do you think we should wait? I'd probably leave all that right until the beginning of the regular season. All right. We'll go ahead and we'll keep the exact same lineup for the next game at Tampa Bay. Patrick Lane of New Jersey injured day today. So is Mark Stone. Yeah, draft he's, coming up on Friday. He's listed as as day to day, but he's hurt for four weeks. Yeah, that usually means he's got uh, a minor injury he can play through, but uh, theoretically they could sit him if they wanted to. Because and the four weeks is the amount of time he's going to be like that. Chicago must be dumping salary again. They just traded away Nicholas Hamill. So, ha, 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 I cannot say that name. Nicholas Yarlmerson. Yeah, yeah, I have the same problem. I have just lost it. Yarlmerson. Yarlmerson. Yarlmerson, yeah. Just, just pretend three. the first letter's a Y. <laughs> yep. Okay, let's go through this game, too, and through this one. But, yeah, I mean, that's the, the Hawks are going to be like that for years because of that Kane and Taves contract. Well, oh, that's going to bite them at some point. And nothing much there. Carey Price is out for four weeks. We lost 3-1 to Tampa Bay. Darnell Nurse had a goal, though. Better. Tucker Poolman, minus one. Three shots on goal. Two block shots. Two penalty minutes. One takeaway, one giveaway. Looking at Landon Ferraro and oh, Julian Goche only played four minutes and 53 seconds. Don't like that. And took a penalty at the end of the game. <laughs> of course he did. Yeah, 40 rating, not too impressive. No. But maybe we should try and set our lines to like 15 minutes a piece. And then let special teams. Yeah. In. yeah, you can't do that. Just give them all even time in the preseason. I see what you're saying. 
may also want to bring up one or try one or two more guys from the Moose to just give them a look uh, before the season starts. If they do any better or worse than Pullman or uh, Ferraro. Well, I can't imagine. You know, it's not going to matter too much because hopefully nobody gets hurt, right? Let's take Ferraro off and put back in Andrew Lab. We'll leave Pullman in. Ask assistant. Okay, let's give this a shot. Ooh, I forgot to switch goalies. Oh, well. It's back to back, so. Betso7 in the chat says Even if Kane's Taves contracts hurt them, the Blackhawks have won three Stanley Cups already. So there's that. Yep, true enough. I'd trade some bad contracts for a cup for the Canucks, but. Uh... It is going to be kind of an annual season for the annual thing with the Hawks for a while. Watch wow. him. Yeah, Josh Morris, he comes to play again. Two goals. Trading deadline and have to move salary at the, uh, in the off season. Yeah. I'm just looking. Tucker Poolman, 15-21. Ooh, not a great game. Julian Goche again had an assist this game though, so that's good. All right, and we switch goalies. If I'm going to call somebody up, who do you would you want? Who would you like? Uh, what are you looking for, forward or defenseman? Well, there's more forwards are who are likely to get hurt than a defenseman. I'm thinking maybe give them you a little bit of a look, uh, oh. or what? Let's see. How was that Casey possible? Leipon. What happened? Victor Hedman got hurt for three days. <laughs> he was sitting on okay. <laughs> Injured, mild shoulder. Yeah, the key. Yep, practice injury. It happens. Oh, you're killing me. Oh, we lost seven three. Okay, what happened here? Darnell Nurse with a not very good game. Tucker Poolman. You'll be a fine seventh defenseman, I think, by the looks of it. Julian Gauthier, eight minutes, minus one. Another assist, though. Guy keeps getting assists, even on the fourth line. Yep, I mean, this game scores are kind of rough, and he's not doing anything really wildly wrong, just kind of mediocre in general. Puma's doing okay. The only thing I keep seeing is oh, there's always a one or two in the giveaway column with him, so he's coughing the puck up a lot. All right, so we want to call up Brendan Lemieux, who is... Uh, Betso7 is asking in the chat, if, if a player gets a serious injury, are they more likely to get a recurring injury? Uh, there, there aren't recurring injuries per se in the game, it can increase, if you get injured seriously, it can have certain effects on the player's development speed and uh, his aging. So not not literally, you won't keep getting the same injury over and over again, although I'm looking at making some changes to the uh, injury system in FHM3, and maybe we will be able to get that in. But uh, right now in the game, no, it, you won't get a recurring injury, but it can mess up his development. and. Uh, his uh, the overall development curve a little bit if he gets a serious one. We went to go call Brendan Lemieux, but it turns out he broke his thumb and is gone for three weeks. Yeah, I just saw that. So uh, well, forget it's, that idea. So it's poor. And uh, <laughs> oh, we sign him. Let's see, he signs with Switzerland, and they cut him at the start of the season, and he signs with us and uh, tears his quad. Uh, rough way to start, huh? Development reports. Yeah, take a look. that's a nice amount of pluses and no minuses. Yeah, I'm just waiting to see here. Uh, I haven't got screen hasn't updated yet for me. Oh yeah! Wow. Just wondering if we should, who should we bring up instead of uh, uh, Lemieux? Somebody off of that list, maybe? If it's well, we could bring up mid-20s-ish. Uh, let's 
taking a quick look here. Everyone's going good. Everyone's got a little seeing. Ryan Olsen's had a couple of decent seasons in Manitoba. Uh, Chase DeLeo had a nice year last year. Oh, yeah, he made him up for a little bit, too. Yeah. What if we bring up uh, Michael Spalachek, 20 year old? Try him out. Check. Yeah, set of red there, 117 points in dub last year. Not bad. Let's bring him up. Give him a test. Yeah, let's give him a look. So Don't know too see. much about him. Let's we'll scratch him. And oh, of course, he's hurt. Six days with a bruised neck as soon as we call him up. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? You're going to play anyway. Uh, I hope this is an indication of how the season's going to go. He's still going to play. And we're playing against yep, Chicago. Yeah. So let's see how this game goes. Uh, let's see. Spot check. Versus Chicago, we lost 4-3. Seems about right. Oh, it went to a shootout, though. Ehlers missed, Little missed, Andrew Ladd scored, but Tevu Tervainen, who's no longer with Chicago, and Marco Dano, who's no longer with Chicago, scored. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh Morrissey continues to impress, playing almost 30 minutes. 100 game rating score, despite being a minus one. That guy seems to thrive on more minutes. Tucker Pullman, better game. Yeah, so I think, I'd say Pullman has made the team safe to keep around as a number seven guy. Spot he's, not been, he's had some problems, but uh, been reasonably good. Spot check, where did... Nothing spectacular. Oh, yeah, 48 game rating. Uh, blocked a shot. Yeah. And, uh-oh. Oh, no, wait, I'm looking at the wrong one. Whew. Okay. I was seeing zero minutes on Julian Goche. I'm like, oh man, did he get hurt already? <laughs> uh, we will just flip and put Hellebuck in for this game. Apparently against Montreal, and we'll play and next. This is our last exhibition game, isn't it, I think? I believe so, yes. Yeah, we open the season against Pittsburgh on the 8th. I think that's six days after the Montreal game. Uh, we'll need to set up. And we should also keep an eye out for uh, it's October 2nd. Uh, teams will be starting to wave guys as they uh, get down to their final roster, so we might find somebody decent. Connor McDavid signs for our four year contract for $3.98 million. Not bad. He did not have a great season. Yeah, last bridge year. deal for him. Only had 66 points in 70 games. Yeah, it looks like he was hurt for a while. We won versus Montreal, so let's take one last look here. And we can see Josh Morrissey continues to put up points. Darnell Nurse. Okay. Tucker Poolman. Four penalty minutes. Two giveaways again. Uh, yeah. Spa check. Nothing fabulous. Uh, nothing... Nothing bad, but nothing great here either. Yeah, but seven. no, spot check's been okay. Yeah, I think he'll do, he'll do good being in the minors. Betso7 in the chat says, So I had a goalie that had really good stamina. He had 100% fitness even after back-to-back -back, back -back games. Is there no reason aside from random injuries to rest him and use a backup? Uh, I think it will do if he's... If you're starting them too much, that'll tend to do some morale damage after a while. I'd have to check to be sure. But it's, yeah, it's, it's generally, to, if, even if the goalie, if the stamina is really good, unless you're in an era, unless you're playing in an era where it was uh, like 1960s or earlier, because the game uses slightly different math for making stamina calculations, then you're safe to start them every game. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's generally good to rotate the backup in occasionally, at least. All right, so let's ask. But if you're before, I think it's I think it's I think the year I used was 1963 is the complete cutoff. If you're before then, uh, you can use uh, just one goalie for every game. That's not going to hurt anything. All right, so let's 
so looking I do not like this okay I have a radical thought for you here tell me what you think our first line right now is and I don't like that either is gonna be Nikolai Ehlers Mark Shifley Blake Wheeler good line it was a good line for us last year second line we have Kyle Connor on right wing Austin Matthews centering Andrew Ladd should Andrew Ladd be switched with Nick Patan? Should we move Nick Patan up to second line? Uh, no, I think I'd rather have Ladd there. Yeah? That's okay. a little easy. You know, physical guy, veteran, a little balance for that line. Okay. Third line. Not in... sure. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm not sure it's... You maybe want to look a few weeks or months into the season and consider making that change, but uh, right. at this point, no, not yet. And then if you do that, you probably want to just bump Ladd down to the third line and put Lowry on the fourth. Well, that's what I was going to do. We have Lowry on third, yeah. centered by Brian Little and Jordan Eberle. Fourth line is Dick Patan, uh, Andrew Kopp, and Julian Gauthier. Defenseman, I already made a couple switches here. We have Victor Hedman, Truba. Morrissey, Bufflin. Actually, I'm going to switch that and put Bufflin and Hedman together. Morrissey and Truba, Nurse and Myers. So our first line, we're going to put a power play. We need Bufflin on the left side. And we want to bring Kyle Connor in on point. I think. Our, so we have basically our first line our second line Austin Matthews Jordan Eberle and how do you feel about Julian Gauthier playing on the second line power play or no um not quite yeah I mean he's a big guy he can you know get to do some screening in front of the net uh I'd, I'd say start with the Eberle in that spot and if the power play struggles uh, maybe throw Gauthier into work okay. to give him a shot uh, point we have Hedman and Truba right now. Would maybe put Myers back there or leave Truba and Hed Hedman? Or should we put a forward back there on the point? Um, well, I like Myers. He's Kelowna Rocket, so uh, I would say go with him. <laughs> okay. Slightly biased, though. All right, we'll give that a... He's just, He was just all sad last year from not playing enough, so... We'll put Myers back there, and we'll put him with Hedman again and take Troop. Well, no, we'll leave Troop on the 5-on-3. Uh, the 4 and 4s I'm quite okay with. Everything else I'm actually pretty good with. Do you see anything else you think we should change? Nothing jumping out at me. You okay with the uh, shootout list? Oh, uh, we got every... Oh, yeah. what's, what's Cop doing in the fifth spot? Yeah, that's an interesting... How about we put Connor in at the fifth spot? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, a lot more sense, I think. Oh, we could put Shifley really in second too. That. He's... Either way, I'm yeah, throwing yeah, yeah, even, even Patan, I think, would be a better pick there than uh, Cop would. Yeah. Now let's put Patan in. Uh, Nick Patan. Extra attackers, Austin Matthews. And let's change that off Victor Hedman, too. Let's put that as... How about... Uh, you want to keep in mind that uh, you're probably going to have, when, when the extra attackers, uh, other than the delayed penalty, are going to come on, uh, it's probably going to be one of the first two lines that's on the ice. Yeah. So you may be smarter to put a third line there, and an Eberly seems like the logical one to me. I was going to say Nick Patan might be one, but okay. Let's yeah. put Jordan Eberle. Either one of them, like somebody who can score a little bit, then is probably going to be on one of the bottom lines. Well, he's got 16 offense, and Patan only has 14. So, Okay, let's look at tactics here. We keep our defensemen at 20-20-20, at, at at but our lines are first line 17, second line 16, third line 15, fourth line 12. But our fourth line's still not playing a huge amount. So I wonder if we should maybe up those minutes more. Thoughts? 
Yep, uh, just the question is where are you going to take it from, uh, third line? Well, I think with our first line being the power play, I mean, if we drop everything to 15 minutes, the first line is still going to get more than enough, I would imagine, between power play and penalty kill time. Or what do you think? Yeah, okay, so you could take a minute, minute or say, what, one minute off each of the first three lines and give it to the fourth? Or yeah, so we put... Not six, too much? Uh, we, well, that'd be six, we go to 16, 15... 14 and the third and fourth line then is at 15 minutes at a target so they're actually higher than the yep. third line but the third line will get more penalty kill time and power yeah, special play. special team stand yeah now i'm just going to take a quick look here because brian little was not on any of our power play units which seems odd he's on the second or at least uh yeah, he's not on no, his... I'm the older screen. Oh, he's on the four on four. And the penalty kill. I'm going to put him on the second line, three on five, two. Five on three or three on five? Three on five. Yeah. I'm going to put Tyler Myers in there, too. And I'm just looking across here, and I'm wondering if... Maybe I should, put it on the 5-on-3, put him on the left wing. How do you feel about that? On the second line, take Andrew Ladd off. Uh, yeah, I mean, for the amount we're going to use, it's it's not like there's going to be a ton of 5-on-3 opportunities, and when we do get it, the first line's going to stay out for most of them, so... Yeah, so we'll put that... I wouldn't worry too much about uh, who's on that one. It's so not going to affect my stay. I use time to that much. I don't think I ever switched tactics on that myself. And I think, believe it's default yeah. set to 60 to 40 or something. Yeah, I think we should probably stick with the same tactic just because it did so well last season. If it starts uh, going haywire this year, uh, we can look Ooh. at making a major change. But uh... How does Jan Koslik need to clear waivers? That's weird. I'd be mad if I lost him. But lost him. Lost him. Nice words, Adam. <laughs> Uh, he should be fine, though. If he's not, I will force trade him back. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, we're in the it's at the a three star guy. We're in the part of the season where everybody's putting players on waivers, so there's going to be a huge pool of guys to uh, distract from him. Which reminds me, we should also check to see how our owner feels about us. Yeah, good point. Okay. And he's very happy with us. Owner confidence. He's full bore, which is great right now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so he's not too irritated that we screwed up his uh, playoff revenues last year. Buffalo has waived both their goalies. <laughs> Robin Lehner has been waived. And Cam Talbot has been waived. They got a, I don't know who they They have. got Jack Campbell too, though. Okay. Eddie Lack is once again placed So he's on probably Lakers. on the injured list. Johan Larson. Calvin DeHaan. Jake Allen. Oh, Michael Furland. Former Brandon Wheat King. Yeah. If you want to get a look at all the waivers, you can just go to uh, yeah, the roster looking, screen and there's a waivers the tab on there. Do you have everybody? Okay. Yeah. There's anyone here. Andrew Shaw is with the Edmonton Oilers. Take a look at that. All right, and then they set him down. Interesting. Lyndon Bay. All right, let's take a look here. Oh yeah, it looks like Shaw's kind of gone downhill in the last couple of years. 12 points last year. So clicking on the waivers in the bottom here, we can see everyone who's on waivers. And there is a large list. Uh, Bet07 asking in the chat, when your goal is to rebuild, why does it still drop so far when you lose? Or am I making enough trades to rebuild? Uh, now, he's not the owner doesn't ex necessarily expect you to make a certain number of trades. Uh, you can still get into trouble with him 
if you're, the, the thing that they really hate is long losing streaks. So as long as you can uh, keep breaking out of those, like if you win one, lose two, you're going to be way down in the standings and you're going to get, uh, he's not going to be thrilled with that, but that's better than, say, losing six in a row and then winning a couple and losing another six, that sort of thing. So those, the streaks are the main thing you need you need to watch out for once you're on kind of in hot water with the owner already. Well, we have one Howden brother. Should we bring the other Howden brother on board? Uh, just taking a look at him here. Very happy. Uh, Lots of names, lots of choices. Yeah. Quentin Houghton actually had a pretty good year last year in uh, Florida. Surprised they sent him down. Well, he'd be, he could be our oh, good extra only three and a half stars. Yeah, Winnipeg boy. Well, we have his brother already on the team. Or, yeah. Writes to him. Where is he? Lost yeah, it wouldn't hurt to... Let's put a claim in on him. Because we can. And then taking a look across. Sorted by highest potential, and you can see... Yeah, I was just looking at Florida's roster to see why they've done that. They're actually pretty loaded, and now they wound up getting Kopitar as a free agent yes. last year. Yeah. And a lot of that, some of their guys have, uh, Bukestad's developed nicely, Logan Brown's coming up, uh, Barkov, Huberdo still uh, putting up points, Lawson Krause, yeah, it's, those guys are going to be contending this year. Calvin DeHaan is on waivers. He might not be a terrible extra defenseman either. Lots of these guys we only have scheduled as B, so yeah, it's always 26. A I mean, so you got to... Guys on teams like the Islanders always scare me towards the end because you know they're, they're getting a bunch of playing time, so are they looking good because of that, or yeah. well, we do they pick really belong up, in the uh, AHL? Brendan, or sorry, Brendan Dillon, but he's, his numbers don't look that great. Played with three teams. Uh, another question from Betts, is there uh, any thoughts to add Lee, what more leeway for expansion teams? Yeah, we actually, Adam and I were talking about this uh, for when we did that uh, Las Vegas game. He wound up playing it on his own and wound up getting fired start of the next season. Yeah. So I think we I need to go back and look at the logic for expansion teams and loosen that up a little for the first you know, two or three years so the teams aren't quite so quick to pull the trigger, although some expansion teams still do dump their coach after a season or two. I think what and now they Ottawa got rid of Mel Bridgman after the first season's GM. Well, there's always questions. Do you think? Do you see anyone else we should put a claim on here? No, I think uh, those. Did you did you claim to Han? Uh, no, I didn't claim to Han. I was wondering if we should claim a defenseman. Okay. We just sort here. By uh... So many. Oh, let's filter this to only defensemen. Yeah, defenseman maybe cut it off at three and a half stars. That'll give you a... Okay, so how do I do that then? I'm looking at my filter screen. I want to set my minimum ability to what? Three then? 3.5. All right. Yep. Theoretically, it can go up to eight, but the, the rating scale would never really go that high. All right. We only have a few guys who are ranked A. One is Kevin Klein. Carl Gunnarsson. And, or sorry, who we have scouted as A. Kyle Connaughton is available. Or Kevin Connaughton, sorry. Uh, Where was he? Kevin Connaughton. <laughs> he signed in. in. In real life, or the, uh, he was a Canuck, and it was a Canuck pick, and then they dumped yeah. him to Dallas. He went over. He never quite developed. All right, interesting. Uh, Brendan Dillon, what about him? Well, that's what so I asked. About four and a half. It was, well, he's at level yeah, four and a half star potential. Or B scouted, so he might be lower than that, actually. 
Yeah. We're, we're Looks like his career kind of went off the tracks last year. He wanted to play a couple of games in the AHL, got traded to Columbus. They didn't want him. Or I think he's, yeah, he's still on Columbus. That's who's waved him. Well, it's him or we tried this uh, Brandon Montour, but his stats aren't exactly... He was bouncing up between the A and the ECHL. That maybe take Dylan rep, uh, reclamation project. All right, let's two claims and on players. We'll see what happens here. Flip to the next day and before you make waiver claims, why not check their game ratings for their league? Well, we could. But okay, we got Quentin Howden, so that's great. And we got Dylan, who is yeah, actually good. a, so a couple of waiver pickups. Yeah. Nice. So that turns out, uh, oh, that's going to create a problem now because we got to. I think Darnell Nurse is going to wind up sitting out. Well, that's not the. As end Dylan kind of pushes him out. All right. Well, let's take Nurse back out then. We're going to place him on the trade block, actually. In case someone offers us something really good. Yeah. Take Brendan Dillon off the trade block. And dress him. And we need to send Was Dillon on the trading block when you picked him up? Yeah. Yes, he was. Oh, that's... Yeah, that's a bug. We can get that fixed. That shouldn't be retained. Okay, so... Should we try and see if we can trade away Landon Ferraro? He is a right winger. Um, what have we got? 24 guys on the roster. We got to send somebody. Or are we going to send Poolman down? I guess. I'd leave Ferraro on the roster and see if we can trade him. Give him a month or so. All right. I still got Poolman. I forgot about him. All oh, right. Let's send him back. Not like he's going to develop a ton more in Manitoba. That he's crucially important to them. No. Well, let me just take a look here and see if I can make a trade offer for a draft pick. Uh, see if anyone needs a right winger. Washington needs a left winger. That might work. Let's take Lennon Ferraro. And offering nothing, the scout says, we're offering way too much. A third round pick is unreasonable, but a fourth round pick they will probably do. Sound good? Yep, another pick doesn't hurt. Offer trade. Um, okay, so we have Brendan Dillon coming in. I need to put insert him into the lineup. Okay, looks like I got all the spots now. Let me quickly scan through everything to make sure. That Quentin Howden pick helps strengthen our forwards by quite a bit. Also, any th yeah. Brett Betts in the chat says, also, any thoughts on adding a want list for human controlled, i.e. checkbox for a defenseman that the AI are more likely to offer you a defenseman and a player on your trade block? Um, maybe, yeah. What I'm, one of the things I'm trying to figure out how to do now is uh, get something like the out-of-the-park option where you can uh, shop a player around and... Uh, see what teams are willing to give up for them and as part of that, that would you'd probably be able to specify what you were looking for. Yeah. So we're actually past our time here, but we're going to get... Going to play the opener? Yeah. And that trade was accepted, so complete the trade and send Landon Ferraro on his way. We get another fourth round pick. That's our third fourth round pick, I believe few players on what waiver wire but nobody really we care about so let's play our game versus Pittsburgh here and as this is going on uh, Should I, I have it on action condensed. Should I move it to your favorite of scoring summary, Jeff? 
Yeah, just because we want to get through this fairly quickly. And we already gave up a goal. Perfect. <laughs> of course we did. I mean, the Penguins are not exactly the ideal team to be having. Jo Jonathan Drew on scores. <laughs> Assisted by Crosby and Malkin. That's deadly. I'll have to take a look at adding some more uh, scoring. So we will be back to this game in probably two weeks' time, although might be a little bit off. We'll have to see on that for sure. Um, in the meantime, I'll probably sim through a little bit just so we're a little bit further ahead in the season, see how the season is going. And it's 2 nothing now because, of course, it is. Bartuzo <laughs> scores, assisted by Crosby and Drew Ant. This could be a long game. Yeah, we're kind of picking up where we left off at the uh, end of the playoffs. And Scandella scores to make it 3 nothing. Fantastic. Should I be pulling? And this is still third. First. All right, I'm going to stop this. Hello, Bucks coming into the game already. <laughs> Four shots in. Actually, yeah, we'll be back. Uh, Betts is asking if we'll be back next Wednesday. Yeah, we'll be back for sure. It's just a matter of uh, what which, which game we're going to be playing that. Probably the historical one, but you never know. <laughs> I accidentally pressed the wrong button and sent to the entire game, and we lost 6-3. Good job. All right. Well, we'll play one more game because I did that so utterly wrong. But let's see how it looks. Oh, stats. you said well, we had a little bit of a bit of a comeback at least. <laughs> yeah, at least we got a couple goals. Uh, Brandon Dillon had a decent first game. Uh, we can see our numbers are actually a little bit better, but Julian Goche only played seven oh eight again, so. Maybe have to continue to play around with that a bit and see if we can't get them a little bit more time. Yeah. Nothing really standing out, but nothing uh, too bad. All right, let's end that game and get through this one. Whew. Looks Kyle like the I did pull Hutchison after that third goal. Yeah, Kyle Connor is injured again with a hip flexor strain for three days. Nothing too bad. I think that next game is a couple of days away against the Flames. Yeah, well, let's see here. Two days. And let's see if we can't get a little bit more. And try to not... I was actually just trying to sim through a period, not sim through the entire game. <laughs> and you've hit some end, yeah? Yeah. Mistakes will happen, but hey, that's why they're there. We'll see if we can turn the corner here. And not have her goalie pulled in the first few minutes of the game. All right, let's play this game. Hutchison save percentage as point six six seven. <laughs> well, hopefully he's a little bit better. It's about five hundred. All right. Send to period end. We got a goal. Andrew Ladd scores by Dustin Bufflin, and Victor Hedman scores by is assisted by Bufflin. Okay, goals are coming fast and furious. 3-1. Us. Let's see. Goudreau beat Hutchison scored, assisted by Monaghan. Then Austin Matthews scored, assisted by Dustin Bufflin. All right. Quick look. Face-off one, 14-9 for Calgary. Ooh. Shots. All right. Let's sim in the next period. Let's see what happens. And Wheeler scores. All right. Assisted by Shifley and Connor. Michael grabs a little closer to what we were doing last year now. There we go. 4 2, 21. All right. We'll play the final period now. 4 2 us. Hopefully we can hold on to this lead still. Yes. Uh, Bets must have been asked, as Jeff said earlier, that we'll be back Wednesday. Yes, our stream will go on every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash OOTP developments. If you missed our stream, 
then you're probably watching this right now on YouTube. And our YouTube, where you can find all of our streams archived, is youtube.com slash OOTP developments. If you have questions for about our game, about our particular Twitch streams, you can send us messages on YouTube. We answer them there. You can send us messages on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash franchise hockey manager. You can hit us up on Twitter. Our Twitter is at franchise hockey. If you would like to come talk to some of the other developers of the game, talk to other people in our community about the game, maybe join one of the many online leagues, you can come to our website, which is www.ootpdevelopments.com. Jeff, did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. Uh, just, well, I, can, I think I'm safe to announce this. I'm actually going to be, uh, we're going to start recruiting for our research team uh, later, probably tomorrow or later in the week. So keep an eye out for that if you're interested in helping us out in that area. And uh, rumor has it the uh, Steam Summer Sale will be starting in about four hours from now. But uh, can't officially say anything yet, but that's just something I saw on the internet. Huh. So maybe keep your eyes open for that. We'll, we'll see. And, you know, maybe announcements will be coming soon about a new upcoming game that hasn't officially been announced, but everyone's talking about. Possibly. <laughs> and we're up 5-2 after Dustin Bufflin buried a goal with help from Nikolai Ehlers and Victor Hedman. Okay, so ending on a high note. Yes. Unless we blow this. 447 left. Could happen. And so close. And we end getting outshot. 27 to 26, but we win the game 5-2, which is excellent. Looking at our box score here, quick to end. We can see we out-hit them. Penalty minutes were the same at 11 minutes each. Dustin Bufflin was a player of game with a goal and three assists, which he got a like. Going down here to take a look, and Brendan Dillon had a much better game. 75.8 game rating, two shots on goal, two block shots, seven penalty minutes, and one hit. One takeaway, one giveaway. Not bad. Yeah. Dustin Bufflin still racking up the minutes. Yeah, pretty nice. Fourth line played better, too, as well, we can see here. Still would like to get them a few more minutes if we can figure work on that. But we can see good points all around. Let's see. Huh, all right. And we'll end the game there. All right. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. <laughs> Bets in the chat it says, oh, you mean that upcoming game with a three in it, right? Half-Life 3, right? <laughs> Yeah, Gabe's going to let us announce that for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's what the whole summer sale is all about, I think. It's actually a surprise release. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you oh, very much wish. for tuning in. <laughs> and we will be back again next week. Jeff, thank you for joining me as always. <laughs>